Hey everyone, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. Today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the Wasserteen Bird Feeder Smart Camera Case. So what's interesting about this one is uh, it works with like existing different cameras that you have. So um, there's also a package where you can get one of those cameras, like a ring camera. So we're going to be using this ring camera to test out the case. So pretty much you can use your existing camera or you can purchase the camera and then use this case to turn it into like a smart bird feeder setup. So let's take a look in here. So we got this guy, which uh, is what you would use to like drill onto like a piece of wood. So this would stick in the back and then the feeder would sit on here. And then these are the components of the actual case itself. So we have the roof right here and then we got assuming this is either the front or the back here and then this looks like the main part. So it comes with a strap and some other mounting equipment. I like when they include tree straps in the packaging. And then this is the housing here it looks like. So a couple things to put together in this in this kit. So here's our, here's our camera, and then it also comes with cable, instructions, there's some screws in here too, so I'm assuming we'll be setting up the ring camera to Wi-Fi then, and then putting it in the feeder setup, and then getting it all ready to go. So I think it'll just be a continuous stream where you can just go and access and see what the birds are doing. So it's not going to have any AI. A lot of the AIs are pretty bad anyways, um, or at least pretty inconsistent. So, you know, I feel like that's not that much of a loss not having AI. And the other thing is it's probably not going to take like photos and videos for you. But if you want to watch the birds in your backyard on like a continuous stream or, you know, whenever you're at work, you could pop in and see what the birds are doing. Um, hopefully this will be a good way to do it. So let's get all this set up and then we'll see what we capture. Okay, so I set up a few things here. I added the seed tray on, it just clips in here, and then the top also clips in, which you can then take off to fill. And then there's a bunch of these attachments because it's compatible with different cameras. So there's a bunch of different ones, depending on what camera you're using, you would use a different attachment. And then I charge the battery in the actual ring camera so we'll put the battery back in there's a little piece of like paper you take out so the battery um, can then you know work it's for shipping to have that in there so then our battery goes back in this is the one that's compatible with the ring camera so huh so this fits on in here like this and then the ring camera goes in here close the back up and then I'm gonna use the tree strap to mount it so I think we just need to add seed put the top back on and then I think we're good to go let's check out the ring app real quick I already downloaded it and made an account which is pretty easy so let's take a look at that. I went through the instructions, and after a little trial and error, I got the ring camera set up to Wi-Fi. All right, it took a little, but finally got it connected. I had to turn it off and turn it back on again, because um, there's like a firewall issue. So just customizing stuff in the app. You can do a lot of stuff with motion. But I'm just kind of leaving it all as is. The Ring app will record videos when motion is detected and save those videos for a 30-day trial period. After that trial period is over, you have to pay for the app to save videos on the app, but you can still watch live and be alerted when motion is detected for free, and if you want, screen record from your phone. Okay, so I put the camera back in, filled it with seed, put the strap on. I also forgot to mention earlier I added this uh, the perch on too, it just clips on there. So I actually have 
a stand. It came with one that you can put on, but this is from a different Smart Bird Fear. It's already up, so I'm just going to kind of sit it on and then tighten the strap in the back. Uh, but we got a lot of snow. It's a little, little snowy. I think we'll just kind of sit it like that, tighten the strap up. Cool. Let's take a look at the app. So it says it's installing an update. I was taking some videos earlier. So uh, we'll have to see. We'll see what happens. I'm excited. Looks nice. So we can take a look at the live, the update finish. So that is, it's pretty cool that you can just see. And it looks like you can do um, like two-way communication. So you can start and stop that and then like look at the video too. Let's go to live. So it looks like it'll take clips when there's motion and then you can also just look at it. Setup looks nice. I'm excited to see some birds on it. But with a new feeder, sometimes it takes a little bit. So we just got a couple motion no notifications. So we'll see if it's a bird. Oh, it is a bird. Oh, it's an American tree sparrow. It's so close to the camera, you can't really see it very clearly right now, though. It's cool that they already found it, because it was just like a half hour ago when it was put up. You gotta get in focus, little buddy. He's just feasting in there. Let me see if we got the clip. Because it looks like it... Yeah, so let's look at the motion detection. When it detects motion, it'll take a clip, but you can also look at the live. That's cool. He's still not really in focus, though. Can I, like, autofocus it? I kind of feel like the camera wants to focus more on the background than the bird. I do like having the audio though. So, so far, we're blurry. After doing some research and looking at more videos taken by the ring camera, the blurriness seemed to be an issue with focal length due to the fact that the camera isn't made for viewing objects up close. Nevertheless, the camera still captured some cool videos. After testing out the Smart Bird Feeder case with the uh, ring camera in it, I had some final thoughts on it. Uh, the battery life has lasted a really long time. It's been out for like 15 days and it still has power, uh, which is pretty good for like, a, you know, just running off a charged battery. So that's pretty cool. But the main thing is that uh, the focal length on here, it just, the birds aren't really in focus when they land on here. I mean, these security cameras aren't necessarily made to look at things really close to them. They're made to look at the whole area and, and make sure, you know, nothing uh, suspect is going on in your neighborhood. So that's the big thing. But if you want to see birds coming to your feeder and kind of get like an outline of them, kind of just see the general, you know, look of them, then this would be good for it. The case worked well. It's just the camera focal length that's been an issue. And apparently the Blink and Wise cameras, which are two other ones that work with this, um, may be a little bit better. I haven't been able to get video from those cameras specifically because we just have the Ring one to try out. But that's kind of my overall thoughts. Um, it's been cool to test out for sure. I was able to get a hold of some footage of the case with the Blink camera, and it did look much more clear. I wasn't able to find any footage from the other camera, but would recommend the Blink camera over the Ring camera if image clarity is important to you. So I ended up going through all the footage from the Ring camera and the Washington case, and 
One of the coolest things actually was at night there was a raccoon that came to eat a couple times and you could actually see it using its hands to try to pick up the seed and then it would just go in and like eat seed. So that was really interesting. But I was also thinking about if you have one of these security cameras lying around, it is a cool addition to just get the housing and then just have it watching your yard and then also birds come. It's kind of a good camouflage for like a home security camera too um, as a smart bird feeder. And then you can kind of passively look at the birds and, you know, see the shapes and the outlines and, and all that while also securing your yards. So that's another another kind of application for this. And uh, also make sure you squirrel proof it if you don't want to see squirrels <laughs> coming to that feeder. Um, but cool to test. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.